Blast Blast Boom is back, and this is an updated Lightning Runemaster guide that uses Brand of Deception as the main damage source. Typically, I'm not a fan of pure damage over time builds in Last Epoch, but this one makes an exception, because there's no ramp up time while you wait for stacks to build with Brand of Deception. It can only stack once, and it's instantly applied after you go boom. It also deals enough damage to pretty much make anything aside from the empowered and monolith bosses flop over on the first tick. There's been some changes made to the passive tree, and Idle is allowing us to push nearly 400% shock chance, which directly scales the damage that Brand of Deception deals. Be mindful that the damage is not scaled with more specific sources of shock, such as chance to shock on spell hits. That means that nodes like this within the sorcerer tree are taken for the pure lightning damage boost, and not the shock chance on lightning skills that they provide. So just be careful or take a minute to test gear choices at the dummy, and ensure you're getting the most bang for your buck. Zia Sparks, which is the two room combination we detonate in this build, has solid auto targeting and thanks to increased radius from the specialization tree it rarely misses. The best defense is a good offense with this build, and since Lightning Blast doesn't need to hit a target to generate runes, you can even prep them before you see enemies on your screen and just nuke them once they are. This build is an incredible boss killer, since boss mechanics can be learned and then incoming damage can either be mitigated or avoided altogether. When selecting Monoliths, you can continue to stack modifiers like enemy health, resistances, glancing blow, reduce damage taken, and it just doesn't matter. Regardless of how high the enemy health scales, the dot will still dispatch them quickly. However, what you don't want are maps where enemy types like Panthers are hastened or frenzied as they'll slash through your defenses faster than you can get your combo off. This can also make stationary objective maps difficult, but not impossible. Look to use additional cover rather than standing in the open to secure your victory. Here's an example of what I mean. By using these rocks, we can provide additional survivability to an otherwise fragile build. In echoes where you continue to move forward in a direction, this isn't an issue, because you can keep detonating your two room combination and clearing yourself a path. However, when enemies are coming for you, rather than waiting for you to approach them, the tactic has to change, and sometimes the best move is to actually move away where there's space rather than into the enemy as seen in the previous footage. As mentioned, I've optimized the passive trees for better results, and I've tested each node individually as I revisited the build, and these choices have given the best output. I'll leave these on the screen for several seconds, so you can pause if you'd like to copy them or come back as a reference if the build links are down at any point. Since we're detonating Runic Invocation with Sea of Sparks, we can't benefit from the incredibly popular Frost Guard, the one that reduces damage taken by 30%. That means ultimately you'll have some deaths. However, the build isn't held back by damage, meaning it will continue to scale corruption provided your positioning is solid. And because of that, I'd recommend the build for players once they have a good knowledge of enemy abilities. Being able to recognize mob types and knowing what they can do will definitely help you survive. So this is a good echo to use as an example because we're going to have to seal the gate as the final objective. And that means that we're going to have to stand relatively in one place. And that's when this build is the most vulnerable. The premise of this build essentially is to get two stacks before we detonate the Runic Invocation. Anything that that hits is going to put that dot on the build. And if you're looking for an in-depth guide, you can check out the link in the video description for the original video that explains all of these concepts. One dot is going to take out even the higher health enemies provided they're not an actual boss. Be mindful of the enemy types, as mentioned previously, you really want to make sure that you have a good understanding of their abilities. If you do that, then you'll be able to survive for long periods of time, even if you aren't taking them out. However, the added survivability that you get from dealing your offensive damage is going to take them out much quicker and get you through the map. You don't have to kill 100% of things, but with this build, it's really easy to do. Just make sure that you're staying in a relatively safe position. And sometimes you'll want to retreat a little bit, not completely go back to the beginning of the map, but you see how I kind of circled around the enemies there just to avoid any of the incoming damage. Although we do use ward for this build, we don't have thousands upon thousands of ward that you may see in some other builds. So let's head down to the objective now. And again, this build is controller friendly. However, it works a little bit better on keyboard and mouse. And the main reason for that is because of the frost wall. Having control over where the frost wall places is really incredible for this build because that's gonna give you haste. It's gonna give you the flame ward which is additional ward and so forth. So I would recommend keyboard and mouse for this, but it is playable on controller if that's the only method that you play. I'm gonna teleport by just for the sake of the video. Pop a potion there just so I don't go down. And here we're gonna get to the objective. So what I was mentioning about using the map as part of the way of kind of aiding yourself defensively is we don't have to stand in this for the entire time. Even when you're charging the beacon for that particular objective, you can move in and out of it, just staying in there when you need to or have a handle on the enemies within. Placing strategic frost walls here is nice as well. You can leave it for a period of time and then go through and get that ward as it's needed. And that'll kind of give you some additional survivability even when you get stuck in hitting a mob like that as you saw for a second there. Everything's gonna go down. So really the biggest focus here is just staying alive. 
And here, again, just kind of going back to where there's space, I don't need to take everything head on like I do when I'm going through the Echo. Let's go ahead and go a little bit further over to the west here. What I mean is when you're moving forward, you don't need a target with Lightning Blast to get runes. So you can have two stacks and then just detonate them. And then I can generate them even though these enemies are dead. And I can keep marching forward like this and basically do it forever. And it makes these incredibly easy and almost mindless to clear. So when you have those objectives that you need to defend, that's where the actual strategy comes in. So make sure that you're comfortable with kind of changing up that gameplay when you get into that situation, or you may struggle with this build. All the specializations can be found through the link in the video description. The gear as well can be found there, and this information has gone into more detail through the first video, which is also in that description as well. So check that out if you haven't seen it already. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.